or maybe there is something the client can do about it. Um, like it, it understands the type, it might just not understand something that's been done to the type. So like. But tar, but tar is not a, an example of that, you're saying? Well, the, the plus tar, it's, to me, it's, it's kind of, yes, tar is a way to encode a file system. Uh, but beyond that, like, there's not another way to encode the file system. You see what I mean? It's not like we have this generic file system specification and you could do it as tar, but we would also support zip or some bunch of other formats, at least from an OCI perspective. Like, that's not really the situation we're in. I mean, when we're talking about, you know, moving away from layers, for example, it's, it's not just about moving away from tar, but also like the underlying representation is going to be different. You see what I mean? Uh, no, so that makes sense. So, so, so basically, if we're if we're working with tar and JSON, don't oh. just put a dot to you know, as it's expected that all clients would know how to work with that. Well, I, I don't that kind think of... it's wrong to do the plus tar. In fact, like the, the only thing that seems to be coming up now is related to how many of these like plus suffixes can you have. So. Like there's, there's, it's really not a problem to use plus tar. I mean, if, if you read the RFC, at least when I was reading through it, the plus part is perfectly valid in the main type. It's just the suffix is going to be what you need to, how you interpret what you get. So for example, like if it's plus tar and then plus gzip, then you have to you know, parse it in such a way where you, understand that first you have to gzip it, and then after you've done that, then you have a tar uh, that you can process. I see, okay. So like, you could theoretically like compress your JSON as well and have, have a media type that's plus JSON and then plus gzip. And then you would always know I have, first I need to uh, decompress this and then I can handle the JSON, so. I don't know if that's something that we want to support, but at least like, for example, say, say Jason was now starting to be compressed, right? And now clients are suddenly getting these media types that they've never seen before, but they're actually media types they know, they just happen to have a plus gzip on the end. You know, so the, the clients could actually know how to handle that. Um, but no clients would handle that because every client has like a, a static set of strings that it's matching. So th the question is like, is, is that how we should define these media types as a set of like parsable, something that's kind of parsable and like is somewhat defining how the clients should uh, interpret and process this stuff or if, if they're all just a set of strings that we're just matching, then really the format doesn't even matter. It's like just aesthetics. John, you're on the call too. What, uh, you brought this topic does up. Does my, my mic work now? Okay, it looks like it works. Wonderful. Um, I, I missed a portion of what you said, but I think uh, the general thing I'd like to get out of this is that I can look at a media type and write a client such that it can work with new media types, kind of, right? So perhaps I want to display something. If I know it is plus JSON, then perhaps I could pretty print it. Or if it is plus tar, I know that is a set of files. Uh, I could append something to a tar file. Uh, I could display it as a, as a file system if I wanted to. And what you're saying is that like right now we just have one representation of a file system, it, it seems to me that we may in the future have, you know, OCI v2 image uh, format, whatever. Um, I, I would expect people may wrap things in a tarball still and perhaps uh, gzip that and then perhaps compress that and, and being able to have a client that can still do something useful in those cases would be nice and then not have to hard code, you know, four and strings for the, the entire combination of possible attributes in a media type. So I, I missed some of what you're saying, but I think if we can just define what these things mean and what can I can expect, um, 
it would be much nicer writing a client for this. Yeah, I mean, I guess there were some concerns that were brought up to, first off, whether or not we need to use predefined suffixes. I think that was originally, was brought up around the Z standard, um, basically defining this new suffix that isn't yet registered. I think most right. everyone's in agreement that like that registration process is not something that moves at a pace that we usually move at. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we should be beholden to that process, but if, you know, if we can act in the same spirit as that, um, it'd be nice so that we don't have to come up with our own uh, system of things, right? If I can just take the last suffix and be like, oh, gzip, okay, I can compress or decompress this thing and get a new thing, uh, that's very helpful. Yeah, in the Z standard case, it's probably a little easier because it, it seems pretty clear like how it would be used as a suffix since it's a, the exact same as like essentially the gzip su suffix. Right. And we could actually even go to the authors of that and they may have already done such registrations already. I don't know. Um, but, you know, like, if that's something that- I'd really like to yeah. clean up the foreign layer thing as well, if that is ever possible. Um, I know maybe not in this universe, but in a, in a new version, if, if that could just be another suffix thing, that would be wonderful. Well, yeah, I mean, my view on that is that the foreign layer stuff should just use the regular tar type and then just should use an annotation. I don't think it should be immediate. It's not immediate type at all. Oh, I see. It tells you yeah, nothing that makes about the actual sense. content. So, I mean, I, I feel like that was it was done that way so that it would fit inside a manifest, but this was actually copying what Docker had and the original version of the Docker manifest didn't have annotations. So if annotations had existed, it probably would have just been added as an annotation. Or uh, there was there's URLs or something, but yeah, just the, the way it ended up getting processed like was related to how the client was handling it. So yeah, from, from my perspective, that's like just I mean, we don't necessarily need to go clean it up, but you know, there's there's other ways you can handle that. Sure. Okay, um, so concretely, I don't know what we could do for this other than perhaps like writing some words after the media types uh, in that document that describe, you know, this this apes, this RFC, and uh, there's a suffix that the, the, the last suffix describes the outermost thing, and then that ties into gzip, Z standard, uh, and the encryption. And, and I'd honestly be happy with that as long as, you know, going forward, if we add any more extensions there, in a similar manner such that we don't have to compare so many strings and I can rely on the fact that the media types will be in this form. So essentially like you're okay with, if you saw the, the, the full string, you know, it potentially has plus something, plus something, plus something. But when you go to interpret it, you have to interpret it first as just something plus something. And it's always gonna be the last plus. I think that's what the RFC actually says, that the last plus specifies what the suffix is and everything before that is just a type. So you have yeah. to process them kind of one at a time until you get to a flat type that you know what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, until we change like fundamentally what a container image is, uh, I, I guess like each layer being a uh, overlay tarball, um, I don't want to add any more like base media types and ideally everything is a suffix. Um, but I mean, if that changes, then yeah, we would need to add a new base media type, and and I I think it's much easier to deal with these like you know small additions to the spec rather than you know, having to consider every single new media type at once. And I'm not just repeating myself here and again, but <laughs> uh, you get the point. Yeah, I, I I think I I agree with you on that. There, you you brought up some concerns, but I, I originally I couldn't tell. If they were just concerns that you just wanted addressed or there were stuff that you disagreed with, but it sounds like they were just stuff you wanted addressed. Yeah, so stuff it's just like, the document. Are we matching the RFC? Yeah. And yeah, those RFCs are, they're kind of hard because they were, they were designed with a much 
different use case in mind. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think at least from the perspective of following uh, the formats that they've defined around what it, what a media type is, I think we're following. Right yeah, we're, we're pretty close. I, I read through it and I, I don't see anything that's going to kill us. As a matter of fact, they don't have anything for container images. The image types that they already have are relevant to us at, at this point, unless you want to consider them as a, a new layer type that we're not, that we're going to support. Right. Like, like my problem is that either we are following this RFC or we're not following this RFC and we have no explanation of what we are doing. Um, so, you know, either we explain what we're doing or we follow the RFC and, and I'm fine with either way. Yeah, I think, I think we should mention that RFC, but then we should define very clearly what the format of the media types is that's allowed, give yeah. examples, and then like if we're supporting this, because I think this is where the confusion is, we have, so say for the, the Helm case, you have plus tar, and then potentially plus GZ, and then maybe something, some encryption thing after that, you know, how, how are clients expected to interpret that? And how are uh, kind of people who are developing these uh, new systems, how are they supposed to define their media types? Right. So, yeah, I, I think we should. So is the artifacts, is the artifacts repo not a good place to do that? Because if that's the, if people are coming there to define their new media types, like I feel like um, whether it's copied off a spec that's in image spec or there, like that, sh that should be a good place to go to say, this is how we build a new client for like a new artifact. Yeah, that is where we want to define. Even, even, okay. the, even the image spec eventually should, right, should be a child of the, uh, the artifact types. But we will have an initial you know, image spec, of course, right, that already exists. I see. Okay. Uh, well, the way the, yeah, I think that relationship is right in terms of like artifacts cover images. Um, but the one thing about the artifact spec is that it's, or the artifacts repo is it's not intended to be a specification. It's more intended to be guidelines. So I think if we're going to yeah. clearly define what a media type is, it should probably be in the image spec. Like if we wanted to define, right. Right. like it has a specification, so then that could be version. I, I guess in the end it doesn't matter, but like I don't foresee us like publishing like an artifact specification. Um, the artifacts more going to list a bunch of types and then link, right? Uh, link to other things. So yeah, it might have like you said, it might have some common, common stuff, right? Like a pointer to this order I've seen. Well, it, it get back, it's get back gets back to the same issue we had before, which is whether or not the manifest in the index specification belongs so tightly coupled to the image spec. And right. I, I think that was kind of a historical thing, but in reality, the definition of the media types belong with the descriptors, which are where the media types are used. Um, right. And the descriptors are related to the actual manifest. So, I mean, any sort of strong definition about what a media type would might look like should be in there. Yep. Uh, but yeah, the, the artifact. Yeah, so either it's an index in and it, of itself, or it's got a little bit more in there, right? In the artifacts repo. We'll see. Yeah, the artifacts repo would be a good place to give guidance on how to generate new ones and some examples. Is is the um is the Helm stuff? There's, there's a plus tar in the layer media type, but it's not a tar file. It's what is a it, YAML? What, what is it? No, it is a tar. Oh, God. Sorry. It's a tar ball. Um, compressed or uncompressed? Um, compressed. Compressed. Okay, we should fix that. Or is it we too should. late? No, it's not too late. We actually. Um, we actually put all of the artifact stuff or the OCI stuff behind an experimental flag, so we can break whatever we need to break. Is cool. it is it just an OCI layer, or is it an actual something different? I mean, it it is, but it just has a different media type. Different. I can um, let me throw a link in the HackMD. I kind of. 
at the end of the documentation, I go through sort of the layout on the file system. Hold on. Yeah, so if, it's, if it's defining this, I mean, that's really where a new media type you want to use is if it's not just defining tar, but also defining a file system layout. Um, like in cases where it's just like, say for example, we had just a flat image. It almost doesn't even need to be anything other than just a normal application slash tar. Uh, really the, really having these special media types is related to, yes, it's, it's a specific file system layout and then it's tarred and then it's compressed and having that represented in one type. The problem is that they're trying to key off of those media types to determine, you know, this is a Helm chart, I think, right? That's what the configuration descriptor is intended to be, since that is oh. always types. That is always defining a, a very type specific format. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're just we're just checking for that string and dealing with it in a single way. Like we don't, you know, we're not even looking for any other types of plus or dot where if we see that exact string. So it's really not um, that complex. Even the layer media type or you just care about the config media type? Um, both. I mean, it's using the that or us library and it just all it does is it filters on things that match that um, that exact string. I'm cool. All right. Um, so focused on like what we want from the OCI in terms of deliverables uh, or work items like. So I guess we want to add something to the image spec uh, to define the media types. Um, and as explicitly as we can, probably based off that RFC linking to it, um, but maybe adding more container specific details related to the media types, since most of the RFCs are usually related to HTTP. Mm -hmm. And want to add something to the artifacts repo to give some guidance, essentially how to create new ones and some examples. Um, we don't have to include counter examples, but you know, I think uh, showing how it's being done successfully is, uh, would be useful. Uh, there was one other thing, uh, but let's, let's finish this part too, because I wanted discuss the encryption aspect of it too. And I, I think that one's a little trickier. So I'd rather discuss that after we discuss these work items, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so Phil, are you taking notes on, on these? Someone's yeah. taking notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. sort of, yeah, sort of so keeping up, good. yep. Okay, so should we discuss the, the encryption aspect of this too? Um, I, I see Brandon joined as well. Yeah. Uh, the encryption one's a, a little trickier and uh, kind of related to the non-distributable. There's, encryption has both, it mentions that there's a, something that needs to be done to process a media type. Um, but it doesn't quite mention exactly what that is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it's it's also generic um, kind of construct as well known, which makes which is a bit tricky, I guess. I mean, personally, I, I like that, but I don't. I mean, you you're asking a lot of stuff around it. I don't know if there was some pushback over the idea of having, like, just like a generic like plus encrypted or something like that. Yeah, so I, I was I was wondering whether you know, um, in this case, would it be cleaner to have um, an encrypted, you know, the specific media type, and then that's um, a special case which then gets handled into another media type. So that 
uh, would be in some subfield and some annotation somewhere in the in the spec. So I think like from what we we're discussing earlier, if we're going to go down the road of well, first I guess we got to get the first part done because we need to define exactly what the format is and get that approved by the OCI maintainers, you know, and then it's like from there, then we can address like the specific encryption case um, to mm -hmm. make sure that it matches that specification or basically it matches, as, matches the own recommendation. So like, I, I, I think anything we discuss here, if it's not what's agreed on, you know, it might change in the future. I mean, personally, I, I like the idea of just doing plus I think ENC is is somewhat ambiguous because as I said, like basically what we're talking about is an encoding and plus ENC could also mean just that it's generically encoded, whereas what we're talking about is just there's encryption, but it doesn't even tell you what type of encryption it is. It's just right. it says, hey, look, before you do anything, you need to decrypt it. Um, but I'm not telling you anything else other than that it's encrypted. Personally, I'm fine with that because, like, I don't want to go down the encryption. I don't want to go down that path, but I don't know how everyone else feels. That, that sounds right. I can't, in, uh, if I can't interpret a encrypted blob as a gzipped blob, then I just want to ignore it until I unencrypt it. That seems right. It yeah, I think that's what's important is that you know, like, you need to have a marker there so that you know what, you know that what, what's there is what you need just you need to do something to it before you get to the gzip part yeah to the layer part um i don't i don't i know like brand has been like kind of back and forth like whether it's just like plus encrypted or it's like plus aes or plus like the specific algorithms yeah i i think Definitely not the specific algorithms now because uh, from as we've seen like there's so much There can be changes there So something that's um, Generic, but it's also a challenge because we just have to be able to specify it um, a, a bit more succinctly But as long as we have a um so I'm thinking, so we have this, the library that's doing the encryption stuff. If we can just specify uh, within the spec to say that here's uh, the instructions to the decryption, here's um, a specification of the library. I'm not sure whether that would be enough. I think, I think it's also, you know, valid to say that that's a part of the conversation between the client, you know, in the registry or whatnot. So it's irrelevant, it, you know, to the spec, whether or not that, that binary is encrypted or not. Yeah, but um, I think I can change the, at least, I, I agree that ENC is a bit ambiguous. We can change that to um, maybe just plus encrypted and then, really just spend some time on defining what exactly how to decode um, the blob. Yeah, and I think like, obviously that's a case where no matter what you define it as, like you're gonna need other, you're gonna need something else to tell it, or you're gonna need something else to actually do the decoding. Like there's, there's no just generic way to, to decode something that's encrypted. There's, there's always, there's yeah, always yeah, some agree. side channeling or something uh, to actually do it. So for, for that case, like I, I think that's better. Like um, you just, from a client perspective, you just need to know that, you know, decryption needs to be done. And like, yeah, there's, there's gonna be some other metadata, but I don't, I don't see any reason why um we'd have to define it with more granularity um and then i i really don't like the idea of doing anything like what the non-distributed is doing where just treating the
encrypted thing because they're completely separate. I think that was just. Okay, yeah, I, I like the, the suffix as well. All right, yeah, it sounds like everybody kind of is okay with the suffix. Like that's, that's, the, best, that's the best thing for clients to handle, um, best thing for registries to handle and in interpreting this, and as well as like the clearest way to define these. Uh, the question was just on the RFC. So I said like the, I don't think the format of the RFC prevents that, um, but I definitely don't see any examples of it or recommending doing that in any way. So I, I think that's where, yeah, we need to add some stuff into OCI that specifies like, here's the format, make sure that the format we're saying is compatible, or maybe we just use that format directly and then uh, give guidance on how clients are to interpret these, as well as like interpreting generally like suffixes. Um, that it may not have seen before or it may not have seen applied to. Well, I think if you're going to add an, an encryption option for suffixes, you need to scope it to probably just layers, not, you know, any other types. I think the band is to do it for everything, um, plus the config file in the manifest also. But that's that's yeah, like a big big change. Yeah, but I I think that's that's the whole point though. Like maybe you know we're just starting out by encrypting the layers, but there's very good reason to encrypt the configs as well. So we'll have plus JSON plus encrypted or whatever. Uh, then the the clients you know should be able to, not all clients must support that, but you know, at least clients should be able to interpret. Um, if they see that, they could say, oh, I don't know, I don't have anything, I don't have any way to decrypt this, but um, at least know that's why it's not handling a type and it's encrypted. Um, so, so one thing that that kind of stirs up is if clients are, per the artifacts spec thing, uh, just looking for a very specific media type and it's possible that that config could also be encrypted uh, then those string comparisons are going to fail i wonder if that's something we should care to call out um, or if uh, i don't know it, it seems like a problem that might happen yeah definitely i um where should we open something on that you know i feel like that's a Artifacts repo give us the rules and then whatever libraries are based on that um, will meet those rules, but um, I agree. You mean for, for doing in comparison across the types or like how do you handle? Could you repeat that? Yeah, it kind of broke up. Uh, was, was the guidance related to how to handle encryption or like how to handle comparison across types? I think both. Uh, yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, do we, uh, like, yeah, exactly. I mean, did, is are we just leaving the plus as a, we let everything in that's like that? Or is it, we do, we look at that and we do something differently with it? Um, I don't know. Right now, the, the things that I'm working with don't have different ways to reason about them. So, but I just don't know the right place for this to be. Um, I mean, the hope is that like creators of the artifact don't have to worry too much about, like, for example, say your JSON is really large, or you, you come up with some artifact that has that potentially has really, really large JSON structures. So the JSON's being compressed. If someone who's a content generator starts doing that compression, is it on the original creator of the artifact to fully document that compression? Or is it- Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Artifacts repo to say, hey, whenever you see compression, you should handle it. Or whenever you see encryption, you should handle it. I think maybe right. that's something we should put in the artifacts repo to say, Hey, you know, maybe this is something that, you know, 
you can either support it or not support it, but at least like understand what it is and what might happen in the future. Because today, yeah, I, mean, I, I like that's why I like encryption or, um, those tags for tar or zip or whatnot, because then you would know how to handle it. But although you might have to version it, right? But I think when you start talking about encryption, it's like how how do you force handling you know that type when there's been no you know conversation between the client and the registry on how to decrypt it. Yeah, and, and to John's original kind of point when he's bringing this up about taming the media types, while it's good that, you know, we can move faster than what IANA, it's not a, there, sh there shouldn't be really that many different variations here for the suffixes like you know we c standard is something that that makes sense it's encrypted something we can all about um maybe we come up with some maybe we use some alternative to tar at some point that's not yet defined um but so basically they should all have a very similar pattern like it's some sort of encryption it's some sort of compression it's some sort of formatting you know it's not like you're gonna have these chains over or you know to infinity yeah i think a a uh a whitelist of encryption or uh compression types or both i guess would be nice as well because then the client you know the things that we're building we can know handle these different types um yeah like i think before with when i mean i've written three or four clients now for registries um and you could, until a few weeks ago, basically only special case foreign layers. Um, manifest list makes things a little bit more complicated, but uh, if you just did a, a direct string comparison for foreign layers, everything worked just fine. And now um, it's going to be some amount of work to change things to work with both gzip and zstandard. And if, if in the encryption stuff lands, especially that's another dimension, and it is not much harder for me to interpret manifest configs and layers uh, with these suffixes than it is to only interpret layers with these suffixes, right? Like I'm gonna have to do the work to parse these media types already. And so, I mean, it might make sense to define them such that they could apply to everything. Maybe they don't happen often, but it might. Yeah, and then I'd also kind of like a common use case uh, how-to guide, you know? Like don't try to do something crazy up front. Yeah, and, and I mean, especially for backwards compatibility with both clients and registries, a lot of this stuff is going to be pretty hard to use until uh, registries and clients all move forward. So maybe, you know, for, for broadest compatibility, don't use encrypted layers or what blah, 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 but I don't know. Right. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense, John. So as, as part of just defining the, the media type, we should also basically strongly define what the suffixes are, um, you know, and how clients will interpret or should interpret them. Yeah. So that we don't have like, we're not gonna see a bunch of like new suffixes or even like suffixes that are already defined, but maybe they're not even used, um, at least from, maybe we can put that in the artifact repo though. I was gonna say like the image spec isn't using all of them, but is it Helm or one of them using something like plus DER or some other type of existing suffix that's not just JSON or tar? That's wild. Okay. I don't know. I just I, mm -hmm. I vaguely remember seeing that. I don't know if that was an artifact repo that was doing that, but it would be good to define those somewhere. Because yeah, maybe that case we don't need to, we don't need to go like really, really wild. I mean, I guess uh, from the structure that you kind of propose, John, around how to interpret them, maybe, maybe that's enough that there's just like an encryption flag and some compression flag and then some type. Um, yeah, but it's ordered and it's hard. I don't know. I think also from a let's not break the world perspective, we're 
probably talking about for container images, V2 spec, right? Not, we wouldn't add any additional suffixes for, you know, for, for an existing V1 image, right? That's what happened with Z standard. That's what originally brought this up, right? Yeah, I mean, that got merged basically immediately. And I'm wondering, like, is this going to continue happening? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that some people were surprised that it got merged without any discussion over versioning. Okay, I don't I mean, know if we, any of the maintainers that LPTM that are on the call today, though. So, are people using this yet? We could we haven't released anything. We could have a V two or something. Uh, I I tried to find an image that uses UC standard. That was. Uh, trying to get uh, container D to, to understand them. I, I couldn't find any images even from all of the, all of the uh, other work that had been on there. I couldn't find a single image that I could pull and try it. So I don't know. If you know of one, you know, send it my way. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, it's kind of a bag of Let's let's have that media type discussion as, or the version discussion as part of the, the merging of that media type, um, because yeah, we should we should at least list the stuff that the image spec is using, um, and specify which version that's used in, and how older versions are expected to handle it. Um, I'm not sure that there's too much guidance in terms of what you do if if I'm a client that uses the image spec 1.0 and then an image came in that had something defined in 1.1, what am I supposed to be able to do with it? Uh, I don't think that's necessarily something we need to go to an image spec you know, 2.0, but uh, we should at least have that defined. I mean, I think the answer is just that you should gracefully handle like, I don't, I don't know, I can't do anything with this image. Like, there's not really much else you can do, whether it's going 1.0 to 1.1 or 1.0 to 2.0. I guess one possibility is um, having something defined in the index where if you have uh, say you support Z standard, then maybe you could have an index that has both types of images. Um, and then you could choose to pull the Z standard one since it should be faster. If you support yes, conditional support it. big flag, that makes sense or field. Yeah. Um, but that can be done in a backwards compatible way, whereas a regular client will come in and it will see, oh, this is this is just a, uh, ah. I don't know that you could do that. Well, I, I was going to say, so there's always like, you'd have to order the index in such a way where you go through and you pick, usually clients will pick the first one that matches. Right. That's how you have a 1.0 compatibility. Um, but then you could have a, say a version 1.1 of the image spec and you could put that in like an annotation and in an index where you could actually go through and you could choose the highest supported image version. You see what I'm saying? And then if there's like a 1.2 in there, you like we'd have to define that for 1.1, right? And then have that defined in such a way where it's backwards compatible going forward. If we just like released a 1.1 today with no like backwards compatibility in mind, then it's just gonna be the answer is like, okay, well, just let clients fail. There's there's not really guidance on how to solve oh. that problem. Mm. Okay, so you'd have basically two entries in an index for each manifest. One of them, one v1, and the other v1.1. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and default everything would be considered v1. But I'm saying like if you're using Z standard maybe you need to specify, maybe you should, maybe there should be an annotation that you can specify in the index to say, this is a 1.1 image. So that 
if you're generating an image and you want it to be compatible with 1.0 and 1.1, or you want an image that anybody can pull, but is also compatible with Z standard, then at least there's a route to have that supported. I mean, most people probably won't care. Uh, do, unless you're, do you happen, unless you're generating like, um, everyone. do you know how uh, most clients handle like recursive indexes? Do they handle them well or not at all? Um, I don't know how most clients will handle them. I don't think Docker handles them correctly today. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it. You shouldn't have a problem. Yeah, I definitely know Docker doesn't. Or, you know, that was a discussion. I think Manifest List wasn't even designed to have nesting, but I think Index does allow that, right? Because that, that would be a good strategy for partitioning these like different dimensions and versions and things, right? Because it'd be nice to have an index pointing to two different indexes, which each have a platform or, or an image per platform, rather than having one thing with, say, 24 uh, images in it, all with different versions and platforms and et cetera. Hmm. Yeah, of the compatibility story, there's even that's kind of hard to. Um, but you could, in theory, have a record at the end of, say, an index that's just another points to another index if, if that was an issue. Like, say, you want to support, continue supporting the 1.0 clients, and 1.0 clients didn't handle nested indexes. Um, but you could put the nested index at the end of the 1.0. So if you had like a 1.1 index, that's kind of weird. But yeah, we, we, we should discuss this. I like that. As part of like what 1.1 looks like. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, I don't there's, know. There's, there's, there's what we can do and there's, you know, what's, what's going to work for every client. It's sadly like you, you can't. You can't. You, you can't think of every possible like backwards compatibility or possibility when you first design. Um, but just not having the dis merging something without the dis without having a discussion, I don't think was a good idea. So let's just make sure we have that discussion. I think, yeah, Phil, if you got all those action items down, I think I'm done with, I think we covered everything that I wanted to discuss related. Yeah, I think it might be worth checking. I, I definitely slowed down on trying to get all the comments down. I did, I was somehow aware enough to hit record, so we will have a recording. Um, But yeah, take a look after. yeah, yeah, definitely take a look at HackMD. I did, at one point you said two work items and I definitely put those in the notes. Um, but yeah, we can clean that up post call if we need to. And then I'll also post the, we now have a OCI YouTube channel where we can put call recordings. So I'll put it up there as well. That sounds like a really interesting channel that it's going to get a lot of views. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple million subscribers so far. Oh, man. No, we don't. We need cat videos. If we can get some cat videos up there, it might help. Maybe, maybe we should have our... Nobody has their cameras on, which <laughs> is better, but it makes for a less interesting video. Yeah, it's not, not exactly fascinating YouTube content to have the Zoom background. All right, so yeah, barring any other commentary, um, like I said, I'll, I'll make the, oh wow, Mike Brown has a Star Wars something or other. Yeah, that'll, um, that'll fix it. <laughs> yeah.
Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll post this. We've got the notes, which we can augment for anything important that I missed. And uh, we'll take it from there. Any final comments? Actually, I do have final comments. Um, I'm going to send something to the dev list, but I'm also going to copy a bunch of folks that are probably not on the dev list about a proposed Europe and Asia friendly call next week when Steve is back on the topic we discussed several weeks ago around tough and signing and registries. So uh, we have some Europe and Asia participants. Uh, and so anyone who has um, sort of ownership of a registry, it'd be great to, to join that. So I think I'll propose like two or three days next week. I think the time is going to be pretty much fixed. I think there's only about two hours of the entire day and it's very early Pacific kind of moderate mid morning Eastern uh, early afternoon UK and late evening Asia. So Steve and I kind of, decided that's all that's going to work. So I'll float a couple days um, as options, uh, maybe create a doodle poll. If people have used that before, it's a pretty simple way to hone in on which day works best for a majority of participants and hopefully get that scheduled for next week. That doesn't mean we can't have this standing call, but it will be sort of a special topics call. Um, the second item is that I mentioned something about uh, a team wanting to come present here. They chose not next Wednesday, but the following as uh, the best time for them. So that'll be October 2nd. I'll throw that in HackMD once they give me kind of a one sentence description, but it has to do with an implementation of an OCI um, registry, I believe if I'm getting that right, but, Anyway, they're interested to get some feedback on that. So I think folks will be interested to see what they put together. Um, so yeah, those are my closing comments. Anything else? Did, what, who, what group is that? Or is it going to be a surprise? Oh, yeah. No, it, it's not meant to be a surprise. I just wanted to give them time to to pull together. It's... um. Tycho, uh, who used to be at Docker, who used to be before that at Canonical, I think he's at Cisco now. Um, but he and some others, including some folks at Canonical, have a um, implementation they want wanted to share. Uh, yeah, so he says, my team at Cisco have been making fairly heavy use of the OCI format. We've written an OCI repo uh, we'd love to socialize it with the OCI developer community. Okay, interesting. Yep, so I'll, I'll uh, so that'll be October 2nd. I think some people are at All Systems Go this week, including them, um, and then next week didn't work. So that'll be Wednesday, October 2nd. All right. Sounds like we're done for today. So um, have a good rest of the week and uh, we'll follow up on the things we talked about here. So thanks everybody. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil and team.